Uh, my name is Ann Burdick, and I am a designer, design educator, scholar, critic, maker, experimenter, doctor now. <laughs> um, and I have just launched uh, what's called the Knowledge Design Lab at the University of Technology, Sydney. And I divide my time between uh, Sydney and Los Angeles. So I started on a really straightforward graphic design trajectory working for design firms around Los Angeles. Um, I started teaching and got interested in graduate school. Um, went to school at CalArts specifically to work with Lorraine Wild because I was really interested in writing and design. And um, after graduate school, I continued to teach and practice. At a certain point, I ended up with my own studio here in Los Angeles and amongst the sort of CalArts community, sort of next door to Jeff McFetridge. I shared a space with Jeff Kaplan and for a while with Denise Gonzalez Crisp and um, Michael Worthington was there in that, in that little triangle in Atwater Village. Um, and uh, at that time, I started doing experimental projects with um, writers of different kinds, electronic literature, um, corpus linguistics, experimental fiction, sort of all kinds of writing, language, words in all different ways. Um, and then when I um, had kids and started, uh, I took a full-time teaching job and decided that I would just focus my practice on um, projects that advanced my interests in writing and design. And so that was really when I started framing my work as a research practice. And so um, by having, you know, sort of the steady position and also the sort of play space of teaching, um, I was also able then to focus on and develop experimental projects for which there might not have been a huge amount of funding, but there would be really interesting questions to pursue in collaboration with different kinds of writers and, you know, again, linguists, editors, fiction writers, all of that. So, um, yeah, and so then ultimately I ended up being the chair of the media design program at Art Center, um, which was really an interdisciplinary um, kind of anti-disciplinary form of design practice um, around emerging technologies and um, culture and how that's kind of changing design and what design is. Um, through that context, so I did that for 10 years, and we were always sort of asking like what's next for design and how is design changing in, you know, in conversation with these forces that are exerting yeah, change in the world. And so um, out of that, I decided to get a doctoral degree at uh, Carnegie Mellon, a practice-based design PhD. Um, because I wanted to develop um, future-oriented speculative fictional worlds that imagined um, kind of future writing technologies. Um, so I could kind of do the work that I wasn't able to do in a more incremental way on actual made projects. I wanted to really cast forward and say, okay, we're going to spatialize writing. We're going to put it in three dimensions. It's going to be virtual, accessible from anywhere and all of that. And so. Um, so through that process, I created a design fiction project, um, and which is a performance and a book and all these different things. So yeah, so that's the long story. Um, and now um, I've, I've left my role as the chair of the media design program to launch this lab at University of Technology, Sydney. So. Yeah, yeah, well, yes and no, you know. Um, uh, the, you know, I've got kids in high school, right, so it's just the security stuff of being a person of a certain age, supporting a family and making a big move like that. That's the scary part. Professionally, it's not scary at all. It feels completely um, necessary. Like, I can't not do that. Yeah, because I've always been sort of like, yeah, you know, yeah, just kind of a risk taker in all of the things I do. So, oh wow, I should have a good answer for that. Um, 
I get a lot of my inspiration from people working in the digital humanities and science and technology studies. Um, and so, um, I'm, yeah, let me think about who is doing the work that I'm looking at or thinking about. I'm not great at looking at a lot of contemporary work, I have to say. Um, you know, one of the things that I am always made aware of by time I... There's an aspect of Los Angeles that I'm always made aware of through the time I spend in other places. And that really is this permission to try anything and to do anything, and almost even an imperative. And um, I don't find that in every context. I don't find that in every culture. I don't find that in every city in the US or every region. Um, I just think that there is, you know, an expectation that you come here sort of you know to the edge to kind of jump off and um, yeah that's just a, a built-in way of being that I don't find that I'm only made aware of when I'm in other cultures and cultural situations where it's not the way of being The cultural differences that I'm faced with at the moment have more to do with sort of institutional cultures and shifting from being in a small tuition-funded private art college <laughs> and as opposed to being at a government-funded university. And um, I'm thinking that they, they, there would be some things that, like if I were to shift over to UCLA, I would find some similar, you know, scale issues and things like that. Um, one of the big okay, so within design, one of the one of the biggest um, sh differences is the fact that the educational system is so different. So in the U.S., you have very little government funding. Um, you have very expensive education, um, and you have, but you also have like a proliferation of options of all different scales and sizes and costs and all of that. Um, Australia is, you know, it's a smaller country, of course. Um, and the educational system is much more um, government funded. And so the way in which design is funded in the, in the universities is through research funding. And so this is, you know, what's also happening in the UK and Europe more so than in North, you know, Scandinavian countries. Um, and so the academic rigor of design is defined, I think, in a very different way. I think here you have a huge emphasis on professional preparation, and there you have a huge emphasis on university orientation and expectations. So, you know, I mean, uh, so in theories, you know, theor in theoretical terms, so Baudrillard writes about Los Angeles in really interesting ways and in the crazy expanse. Um, Rainer Banham is super interesting, of course, his whole take on LA. Um, and, um, oh, who's that professor at CalArts who has LA Plays Itself? Um, no, no, not Norman Klein, but Norman's awesome and has a lot of great writing about Los Angeles. Um, John, no, anyway. Uh, those are some good go-to people. Um, Peter Lunenfeld also, I think, writes really well about LA, has interesting take on things. Um, But you know, so the so I collaborated with the fiction writer Janet Sarbanes on this um, design fiction that I created, and she has a book of short stories, many of which are are 
take place here in Los Angeles. And they're about writers writing. And they're really great. Um, and that's her book called Army of One. And um, yeah, I like stories about writers writing. <laughs>